wipes because otherwise you're going to miss cleaning a certain, you know, all this part that really also needs to be more importantly checked to see if there's any um, repairs that need to be done. So like here, I've got um, some bad cracks and I actually have a, a split that almost goes hole to hole. So using it above here, I'd be okay, but using it down here, I'd be at a risk of this breaking. If this breaks, the whole bridle falls off the horse's head. So that would be non-conducive to uh, general life enjoyment. So um, undo everywhere that I can undo um, a keeper, I'm going to undo it. I'm going to check as I clean, I am going to um, check all the important uh, parts of the bridle, as Jimmy Overdorf says, what life hangs on. So I'm getting the underside and the top side. So both the part you can see and the part you can't see. Because the part you can see looks nice, and the part you can't see is what was touching the horse with all the sweat. So you got to make sure you get it. And I'll pinch my, my sponge around the leather, and I can get both sides at once. And I don't mind a little foam because I'm going to go back over it and wipe it down a little bit with water. So um, that's not a problem. It gets a little foamy. This bridle happened to have broken yesterday. Um, a little safety note, if you tie a horse too close to something like, say, this, or when he rubs his head and gets the bridle caught on it, then the result is this. This wasn't the particular offensive subject, but something similar to it was. What product are you using and how did you get it on your sponge? I am just using um, regular glycerin soap. Got my sponge damp, wrung it out. Rub the sponge on the glycerin soap, the glycerin soap. You don't need a ton of it. It's almost more important. I'm just cleaning this because I'm going to send it to the repair guy and he doesn't want to deal with dirty tack. Um, otherwise, probably everybody's like, why are you cleaning a little tiny piece of broken tack? So, I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to get the brow band. Um, brow band's a piece of tack that's not, if it's tearing or whatever, it doesn't matter. The bridle isn't being held in place with a brow band. Um, it is a useful piece of bridle, but it's not what life hangs on. So I'm going to keep coming down here. When I get to the buckle parts here, this is really important because this is where it tends to break. It tends to get kind of old and cruddy right there. I'm going to get around that area really well. I'm going to actually kind of slightly unbuckle it so I can clean that spot. And you'll also see my buckle's a little bit grungy. So a little bit of fingernail there, or if you bite your nails, <laughs> a little knife or something, and you can kind of get that grunge off. That's just a collection of, of dirt from the horse and um, sweat. Again, the part I'm going to check is right here. Usually where the leather bends is where it's going to break first um, or at the stitches. So you just check. You make sure that if you pull here that it doesn't pull apart because that, that shows you that the stitches are ripping. I keep going. Again, I'm going to actually maneuver this so that I clean this side and so that I check it for any cracks or damage. You're also going to find more of that black grunge. Uh, under there, do a little fingernail action, scrub. I have on occasion used like a, like those plastic pot scrubbers for this kind of stuff to get it off. And I have been told by people to use Windex, but I've never used that. But I have uh, heard of that as a tack cleaning for getting the grunge off. Okay, now assume you had cleaned all of that, then what would you do after the glycerin soap? I'm going to take a, a sponge or a rag with just water. If, mm. if this is really gross and really covered with a lot of grass, I'm actually going to take this bit and I'm going to just soak it for about 20-30 seconds in the water to kind of soften it up. Since this one isn't so bad, I can just go at it with a sponge and I make sure to clean the bit. Um, get all these parts. You'll see that where, where the rain sort of rubs on the rings, they get, they get some black stuff. So I clean that off because 
I mean, you wouldn't want to put a spoon in your mouth that has like old crusty oatmeal on it. You would not pick that spoon dirty out of dishwater and and eat your breakfast. So your horse doesn't want that. Um, and as my husband says, if the bit looks clean, the bridle looks clean. So your 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 tack can be dirty, but your bit can be clean, and everything looks clean. But your leather can be clean and your bit dirty and your tack looks dirty. So that's just a little key. The bit looks dirty, the tack looks dirty. So I always make sure to clean that off. Um, depending on the humidity levels and your weather, you're gonna kind of test around different products. Um, I will usually use after the soap either a horseman's one step, especially if it's humid, um, and or if it's very dry, not every time I clean it, but maybe every fourth or fifth time because I clean it every time I use it, so my tack's getting clean three times a week. So probably once every other week, I'll just take a little bit of, of an oil that's not greasy. So there's a non-greasy neat's foot and I use this um, conditioner from Leather Therapy that's not greasy. Um, so it doesn't, and you can tell if it's not greasy by when you put your sponge back in the water, is it still covered with stuff or does it rinse out easily? So, so like a straight neat's foot oil or a vegetable oil or something I almost never use, but something that's, that's a Lexol or, or a non-greasy neat's foot or this Leather Therapy is a good one just to lightly go over the tack. Don't soak it. It doesn't need to be shiny. Otherwise, when you go to play in it and you go to stop the horse, you're just grabbing leather because it's so slick. And if you're somewhere it's real humid, it's going to stay slick for a really long time. But if you're somewhere where it's dry and arid, you're going to need it a little more frequently. So it's kind of where you are as to what you need. So are you then taking water and, and wiping that? Yeah, if I have... Um, if I have, like here you can see I still have a little bit of suds left over, so I'll just wipe it down with, with a damp sponge just to wipe those sudsy bits off. It's not going to hurt to have them, but I think it just looks lousy. And then again, if there's a little bit of um, sweat still on there, you know, it's just one more, mm -hmm. um, one more clean to make sure the leather's nice and clean and the sweat's all off of it because that's the whole point. The whole two things. Get the sweat off and you know get that salt off of there and then check for, for needed repairs because it's a safety thing and, and getting the salt off is a safety thing because it makes the, the leather crack and, and break. So it's a safety thing and it's uh, an economical thing because repairing and replacing tack is not cheap. So a little bit of and $3 saddle soap will save you a $300 bridle in the end if you just use it.